All right. So thank you all for joining me today. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Boyd McGeeky. I'm an account manager here uh, at Amazon Web Services. I've been working here for a couple of years now. Uh, and as the title suggests, we're going to be working through uh, how to optimize your spend on AWS, particularly uh, around your compute uh, and database services through reserved instances. Um, we will have times for question at the end, so feel free uh, to log them to everybody throughout the call, um, and we certainly will address them toward the end. So the reason we decided to put on this webinar um, today was that over the last couple of years uh, at Amazon, I've been working with um, businesses from large enterprises through to startups uh, and everything in between. Uh, and I guess through working with them, two things have become very obvious uh, and that would be true for all those businesses that I've spoken to. Um, so the first one, uh, I guess, is that while they were very happy with the savings that they could have, that they have achieved um, by migrating onto Amazon, uh, obviously everybody always wants to spend less. Uh, and then the second thing that was very obvious was that uh, reserved instances uh, were highly misunderstood within the market. Uh, and so I guess the, the key thing that came out to us was that people aren't maximizing um, the dollar value uh, of their AWS services. So the aim for me today is, uh, and the aim for Amazon, is to help you have a little bit more of a hop in your step because what we should come out of this presentation able to do is to save you 40 to 70% off your compute and database costs while not sacrificing any of the flexibility that you've come to expect from using cloud services. So the agenda. The agenda is to understand the right business model for your compute resources. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do that in three steps. Um, the first step is discussing what the journey looks like to getting to a position where you can reserve lower prices. Uh, and it is a journey, and it can be very different lengths of that journey, be it one day, one week, a month, uh, and certainly any more than that, we should start having a conversation about how we can start saving money uh, in the short term anyway. Uh, and then number two, we're gonna dig in and try and demystify what reserved instances are, um, and also discuss some of the new flexibility we've introduced around that platform. Uh, and then finally, a lot of you should have a proposal in your inbox uh, from me or one of my colleagues uh, from the AWS team across Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig into that uh, and understand what that represents from your company so that you can feel free and feel confident uh, to go back into your business uh, and know that you're either on the right business model for your current applications um, or you know the path that you need to take to get onto the right business model to maximize the value per dollar spent. So. The cloud is a business model, uh, and I think you're gonna start hearing this more and more, um, and, and that's the big change. Although, uh, obviously, I hope that you, you do enjoy some of the technologies and some of the, uh, the ease of use that we offer you, fundamentally, the big change, uh, the big shift, uh, is going toward this utility model, which fundamentally, it's a business model that we're moving towards, uh, and you should only be paying for what you use. Um, so let's kick off what that journey looks like to get to a point uh, when you can fully optimize your costs. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before and I don't want to spend too much time on it. Anybody that's come to one of our events uh, or attended any of our webinars has likely seen it. Um, but what we find in the on-premise environment uh, is that you have to predict uh, what your resources are going to look like um, over a six to 36 month period. Uh, and that's the first step in the journey is changing the way you approach procuring and consuming your IT services. Um, so what we have here is where you predict your demand um, is the dotted gray line, uh, and then what the actual demand in is, which is the blue line. Um, now obviously, in the initial stages, demand is far below it. Um, so what we see is opportunity cost, it's wastage, whether that be overspending, um, or whether that just be uh, the opportunity cost of investing your time and money uh, in something where you could have better spent. Uh, those months uh, investing in a, a project that was more urgent. Uh, and then what we see as we move uh, toward the right is very quickly we might see actual demand for that service accelerate um, beyond what you predicted in that period. 
Uh, and so what we'll see then often is customer dissatisfaction. Um, a great example of this uh, is the Click Frenzy event, which uh, just about a year ago today um, launched. And unfortunately, it was a um, unmitigated disaster uh, in terms of the, the IT outcome in that it didn't perform. Uh, and so over the last year, they've migrated uh, onto AWS and we've worked with them to ensure that uh, when demand does spike, that they are able to meet that demand. And, and hopefully we all got a good deal last night or we intend to get a good deal today um, from Click Frenzy. Uh, and I suppose, you know, immediately people are gonna jump out and say, yes, uh, Click Frenzy, it's great that uh, we did get a good deal, but that's not matching uh, to what my business model and what my applications look like. They're far more steady state. And that's fine, we, uh, we have a business model for that as well. And um, we'll certainly dig into those steady state workloads a lot throughout this, uh, this presentation. So what we want you to start thinking of your infrastructure as is uh, elastic uh, and is mapping your resources directly to your actual demand to minimize waste uh, and maximize obviously performance when people are consuming your resources. Now, if you think web scale, if you think uh, scaling up and down, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, if you think within Sun Enterprise, it might be a little bit more difficult to understand exactly what this means. Uh, and an example uh, that I often find when I walk into businesses is the IT department is concerned um, because Dropbox is rampant um, throughout their organization and they're concerned people are sharing uh, highly confidential files uh, over what they have no control over the level of security that's placed there. Um, now, Dropbox, fantastic product, uh, obviously a, a significant um, user of, of AWS, so uh, nothing negative to say there. Um, but what if the business case uh, that you had to put forward, um, instead of being, well, we might have uh, a thousand users that use 10 gigabytes uh, each, or we might have 10, became, we'll pay uh, $1.10 per user that uses 10 gigabytes. Uh, and it doesn't matter how little or how much of that you use, uh, or how often that they're leveraging it. Um, will only ever pay for exactly what they use. So, as I said, we completely understand there's a lot of applications that don't necessarily leverage the scaling up and down. Um, you might have moved a st static web load um, onto Amazon in a very like-for-like -like environment. We see that all the time. People that think they, they can still get cost savings, and they certainly do, um, by moving the same sort of setup onto Amazon. Uh, or they needed to move quickly because hardware was failing or maintenance was running out. Uh, a number of reasons. One of the most common is actually we'll move it and then we'll use all the flexibility of Amazon to re-architect so that we can optimize costs. So I guess stage two is you've moved a steady state workload. It isn't highly optimized. Uh, it isn't scaling up and down on demand. It's static. Uh, and in a traditional environment, what you might find is um, that you've purchased the hardware so you know, the application can just take advantage of all of that hardware. So what's the point of necessarily monitoring and measuring that too much? You know you're going to amortize that over three to five years. Um, a quote down the bottom here um, by Lord Kelvin, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. Now, obviously, he has a vested interest in people measuring things. Um, but be that as it may, it, it does apply uh, to the cloud environment where it, when you have access to instant elasticity, when you have the ability to change the size of your compute uh, and database resources in minutes and start paying a new price that's more relevant to your business, monitoring and managing those resources becomes a highly, a highly important activity and one that can save you significant amounts of money, even for static workloads. And that could mean a number of things. It could mean that um, you, you were predicting what demand would look like in 18 months, but right now it's a quarter of that. Um, so you can reduce the server size by half. Um, or it could be any number of things uh, that exist within your organization, like um, the application uh, is memory dependent, but you're using a, a standard ratio of CPU to memory. Um, so maybe it makes sense to, to move that resource onto a, a high memory instance type, which we offer um, to make sure you're getting the big best bang for buck. Uh, and so quick look at, at CloudWatch here, uh, and that's something that we do have by default for you, um, but certainly we never put any restrictions on how you measure your environment. Um, so whatever you use at the moment, we continue um, to suggest you use that uh, and see us as add-on, as extras. So 
it's really a, a circle, uh, potentially a never-ending circle, uh, although I suppose for individual applications it, it can get to a point where it is um, very steady uh, and you know exactly what you're going to need. But um, the reason I've done it in this way is because you need to monitor and measure and then you right size. And we'll dig into that a little bit more, but it's what I've just mentioned. Uh, and then you continue to monitor and measure. And at some stage, you should get to a level of predictability, a level to stability within an application where um, then you can flip your thoughts to selecting the right business model. So just quickly on monitor and measure, um, obviously if you've launched, and I think most of you have uh, a server on AWS, you know that by default CloudWatch is gonna pull out um, certain metrics like CPU, disk, writes, um, a whole bunch of different things there, but maybe they're not relevant um, to what your application um, consumes. The most obvious one that jumps out uh, immediately is uh, that we don't measure memory for you. Uh, and that's because we can't see that at the hypervisor level. Uh, it, it's measured at the operating system level. So um, certainly we suggest you continue to use your own custom metrics uh, and memory is a, a very easy one. We have some sample scripts we can provide for Linux and Windows um, to start monitoring that. But maybe memory is not a good leading indicator either. Maybe concurrent connections for a terminal service environment, transactions per second for the e-commerce people there. Um, so it's really up to you what matters to your application and what you can use as a leading indicator. And then you can approach those measures uh, and, and decide how you react. So it could be auto-scaling, um, which is obviously the Nirvana world where no human intervention is needed and it can scale up and down um, without you having to do anything. It could be that you simply get a notification, uh, either a push to your mobile phone or an email letting you know that um, your collaboration tool uh, has become more popular and it's grown from 50% to 70%, maybe it's time we look at actually scaling out the size of that server um, to handle that. Uh, certainly collaboration is one where we see um, the value quickly accelerate